We're now at the third part of the lesson, 3.2c, Additive Inverses of Rational Numbers. The opposite, or additive inverse, of a number is the same distance from zero on a number line as the original number. But on the other side of zero, negative two and positive two are additive inverses. Zero is its own additive inverse. In video 1.2c, we learned about the inverse property of addition, which states the sum of a number and its additive inverse is zero. We have a positive two, we add it to a negative two, it's going to equal zero. We have a negative two plus a positive two, it's going to equal zero. This is true for all non-zero real numbers. If we have a positive one and three-fourths, and we add it to a negative one and three-fourths, it's going to equal zero. If we have a positive two and forty-seven hundredths, and we add it to a negative two and forty-seven hundredths, it will equal zero. Keep in mind, the additive inverse of a number refers to a number, not an operation of adding or subtracting. It's the number. Number lines are helpful to find the additive inverse of a number. Negative three and twenty-five hundredths is the opposite of positive three and twenty-five hundredths across zero on a number line. Negative three and twenty-five hundredths is the additive inverse of positive three and twenty-five hundredths. They're both three and twenty-five hundredths units from zero on a number line. We can use the absolute value of each to see that they are 3.25 distance from zero on the number line. Here's our first example. Sam spent $5.50 for lunch, then he earned $5.50. What was the overall increase or decrease of his savings? First thing is, we use a negative number for the money spent and a positive number for the money earned. We need to find negative five and five tenths plus a positive five and five tenths. We draw a point at negative five and five tenths. We know in between negative five and negative six would be five and a half, wouldn't it? We draw an arrow the absolute value of five and five tenths units long. It's going to put us at zero. Since the second add end is positive, our arrow moves right. The overall change to Sam's savings is zero. Here we need to write an equation and draw a number line. Tala put two and one fourth cups sugar in a bowl. Then she removed two and one fourth cups. What is the overall increase or decrease in the amount of sugar in the bowl? First thing we do is use a positive number to represent putting sugar in the bowl and a negative number to represent taking it out, taking out the sugar. So our equation is a positive two and one fourth plus a negative two and one fourth. We draw a point at positive two and one fourth and an arrow pointing left for the second add end. Because this is a negative, we're heading towards the left. The result is zero. The overall change is zero. She took out as much sugar as she initially put in. We're at zero. When the first add end is positive and the second add end is negative, our point will be to the right of zero and our arrow will move to the left. When the first add end is negative and the second add end is positive, our point will be to the left of zero and our arrow will move to the right. Since a number line continues infinitely in both directions, every number has an opposite across zero. Negative one million 275,000 is the additive inverse of a positive 1,275,000. Three thousandths is the additive inverse 
of negative three thousandths. The sum of a number and its additive inverse will always be zero. We finished the third part of the lesson. We're going to move on to the last part, 3.2d, adding rational numbers using rules. And remember, the first two parts of this lesson are linked in the description if you missed them. Have a great day, and please join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.